Welcome back to our boat shop, everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. This is our family's boat shop. First off, I wanna thank you guys for taking a minute to tune in. We are doing a lot of DIY type content packed full of information, gel coat, fiberglass, boat building. Our family's been building boats in this shop for over five decades. We actually built this big custom 29 here in the background. If you guys wanna go back in the channel and see how we did that. But today we are talking about removing amine blush. Some people say amine, amine means the same thing. It's a byproduct of a lot of epoxies when they cure and it reduces or it produces a surface film. It almost feels like you sprayed a little bit of WD-40 on the surface, kind of waxy, kind of greasy. And you gotta be really, really careful dealing with that because it will create a problem, what we call secondary bonding. Um, basically, it makes this film and it won't allow subsequent layers of epoxy to bond properly. So it's very easy to fix, so don't worry. It's not a big deal, super, super simple. And what we have here are the basic components. We need a little bit of Dawn, some dishwashing soap. Uh, we got two containers here with clean water at the moment. Gonna need a Scotch-Brite pad, a couple terry cloth towels, some blue shop towels, and maybe some gloves. You know, it's always a good idea to protect yourself. Wear some gloves, wear some uh, eye protection and lung protection as well. So this is part of a whole series of videos we've been doing lately. And again, if you're new to the channel, you may not be aware of that, but we've got well over 150 videos. Now, some of them are going to be showcasing our 29 footer there when we were building it. And then also some of the fishing charters we run, which is what I am. I'm a licensed 100 ton U.S. Coast Guard captain, and I'm also licensed with the U.S. Coast Guard as a second generation professional boat builder. So we do a lot of this kind of stuff. This is how our family's been making a living for a long time. But what we're gonna do to start off with is, this is a sample piece we built a couple episodes back and we were demonstrating how to build a transom and then laminate stringers using epoxy. And you can see that this piece has been bonded together, screw holes are filled, we got a nice fillet in there, but there is a bit of a waxy film now, I like a multi-step process. And of course, everybody's looking for the easiest, fastest way to do something. But in my opinion, using a shop towel first, and let's just do kind of what I call a dry wipe over the surface. We're just gonna try to collect the bulk of this material right out of the gate. And matter of fact, there you can see the residue that that captured. I would rather use a disposable paper towel and catch the bulk of that. First, we're gonna roll right through this video, guys. I, uh, I'm gonna try to move fast, but not leave out more residue right there, folks. So I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, you could wipe it a little bit more if you wanted to. Now we're gonna take just a couple drops of Dawn. Huh? <laughs> Uh, you don't want too much in there. Um, and we're gonna use a two cloth and a two, kind of a two container method. We're gonna put some soap in one. And this is warm water. Um, it seems to do a better job than cold water. One of those simple little things that can make a difference. Now, I want the cloth to have some water in it, but I don't want it to be soaking wet because we've got wood under here. All we've got is one layer of epoxy resin on this. It's kind of what I call a primer, a primer coat. And so I don't really want to saturate the surface with water. I just want to remove that amine blush. So there's some more. You can see the residue coming off. I'm gonna turn this towel. So I folded it so that we've got a fresh surface everywhere you go. Kind of do the same. We're gonna just focus on one side of this piece for the sake of time. Again, more residue coming off. Fold the cloth once again. We're gonna wipe this down several times. Now this is an area Folks, and again, our family's been building boats for years and dealing with composites, but proper preparation is the key to a quality job. 
and you may be inclined to want to skip around in some of the videos, but it could leave out a very important part of the process, and I would hate for you to miss that. Again, more residue. Now, generally, I will kind of keep wiping until we no longer see residue coming up on the cloth. Now, one thing you can do also on a bigger job is you've got one of those little basins with a mild soapy solution. I'm gonna go to the clean one at this point. And you can actually see the color of that water changing. I'm gonna get some of that blush out of there. Really wring that out. Good, we're gonna go back with a little bit of clean water. All right, so you guys probably get the gist of that. You basically wanna wipe it till it's clean. Now, we're gonna take a piece of Scotch-Brite material. This is another, that is the burgundy, the fine. Moisten that up just a little bit, wring out the excess, and very methodically cover every surface. Very important that you don't miss any surface. I like to do it like a search grid, if you will. You could go back and forth from one end to the other, and then you could go lengthwise back and forth. Same deal down in that. Really use your fingers to push that scotch Bright pad down in the fillet. You gotta be a little careful on the top of the plywood. There's actually a little pour or an opening or a void in the plywood right there. We want this thing to have some moisture on it, but we do not want it soaking wet. Obviously, we do not want to run any water down in the pores. Same deal, very, very methodically, up, down, round and round, back and forth, the little nooks and crannies. This is gonna be crucial when it comes to a proper bond. So I'm gonna wipe a little bit of the excess off at this point. Now is also a good time to tell you guys how much I appreciate everyone tuning into the channel. We've been seeing a lot of growth, a lot of new viewers, and I just really sincerely wanna tell you guys how much I appreciate you tuning in. And for us to continue to do these things, we need continuous growth. We need you guys to support the channel if you don't mind. And if you're finding this information helpful and useful and wanna see us do more of this kind of stuff, um, remember to give us that thumbs up, like, share, comment, and if you haven't already subscribed, and yes, feel free to comment. I try my best to read every single comment you guys send. And what we're doing right now, matter of fact, we had requests for this transom and stringer piece. Then we had some requests. Actually, I'll show you guys if you wanna back up one video, kind of a, a prelude to what we're doing. We used a good bit of the West Systems fillers to make a whole variety of putties that we used throughout the process of putting this stringer and transom piece together. So feel free to go out and go back and check out all of those videos. I am sure you folks will find them useful. So we have wiped down with soapy water, cleaned the pad, wiped down once again. I'm gonna take our shop towels Good old trust, trusty shop towels. Now, if you live here, if you're stateside, I buy these at Lowe's. They call them shop towels. Now, one thing about Amine Blush, water is gonna be the best, or a mild soapy and water solution. Don't be tempted to use any kind of a thinner or solvent like acetone. That can actually work it down deeper into the material, and it can create a bigger problem than you have with it just being on the surface. Also, do not be tempted to just take your sandpaper and say, well, I'm just gonna sand that amine blush away and I'll vacuum it up. Same deal, it's gonna clog up your paper, it's gonna swirl that blush around, and um, 
It's just not going to work for you. And like I'm saying, guys, this isn't something that I'm experimenting with. Our family's been doing this for years and years, and I'm showing you guys the way professional boat builders and repairmen do it. Matter of fact, to show you guys that we've had a lot of experience working with epoxy, here on this wall, we've got a whole series. That was a little cypress frame epoxy skiff. And then this one is a marine fur plywood stitching glue. And then we've even got a little Piro up there, a little 12 footer. So all of these boats were built using epoxy and uh, same similar methods. So we've used a lot of this stuff. Now, again, when we're making these videos, we're doing them here in our actual shop. I'm not working off a, a script. I'm trying to just remember all the high points. Feel free to leave me a comment or ask a question, or if you guys have had some experience with different materials that you really enjoy working with, I'm listening to what you guys are saying, and I will do my best to produce the kind of content you guys are hoping to see here on the channel. So, this is a shorter video compared to the other ones. Got a bunch of long ones out there related to this topic. Feel free to check them out. As always, folks, it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fishbump TV here on YouTube, and we will catch you guys next time out.